Yeah. Can't wait for uh, the color to come back. So does it feel like deja vu all over again with uh, all the changes up front and you're the kind of last man standing again? Yeah, a little bit. Um, you know, obviously wish all those guys were out there. They're tremendous players. Um, you know, can't say enough about, you know, all the guys that are not in there. But, you know, this is the way that it works sometimes. And, uh, you know, I think for the most part, the young guys that have gone in there have done really, really well. Um, Andre Dillard is, is playing really, really good football. Got Jordan Malata back. Um, Landon, for a rookie, has gone in there. He's progressed each week, keeps getting better. Um, you know, Jack Driscoll's been able to play guard and tackle. Nate Herbig can fill in across the board. So, you know, Stout has done an incredible job, I think, these past couple of years of making sure guys are ready to go and developing a lot of these uh, young players. Um, so that they can go on in and, and, and get the job done. Can you a little bit on Dillard uh, and when you watch the film now of him versus, it's been a while, yeah. so you might not remember what he looked like or in those well, early parts, but yeah. Um, yeah, what stands out to you? Well, you know, Andre's always had the physical attributes. I think we've touched on that for a couple of years. I mean, his foot quickness, his suddenness, his size, you know, he's got some really, really good things, positive things to draw on as a player. Um, and I think he's just naturally progressed. The technique's gotten better. Um, you know, the knowledge of the game, the the awareness. He's worked a lot, in particular, with uh, you know Stout, with uh, I think Isaac when they're next to each other a little bit this year. They were talking a lot about preparing and how to scout things up. So I think he's he's just naturally progressed as a player. And um, you know, he's had a lot of strengths and, and ability, and now it's just starting to um, become more natural and and um, you know. Just executing on a higher percentage of plays. When you have all those moving parts, how much more is it put on you? Um, I mean, you know, I just have to communicate more. You know, I think that, you know, when you play next to two guys and Brandon Brooks and Isaac Samalo as much as I have, um, you know, they help me out quite a bit. And we think very similar because we've been through the same, you know, um, we, you know, situations, right? So, like, we all are drawing on the same uh, experiences and the same, um, you know, uh, thought processes when a defense gives us a specific look on a play. And when you're playing against somebody new or a young player, uh, you don't have those same experiences. So, you know, what's, what feels like something that um, is a natural thing to happen might not be natural, so you have to just communicate that. And I think that that's the biggest thing is um, you just want to make sure you're talking more, make sure you're communicating more, make sure that you're, um, you know, that everybody's on the same page. Uh, because as an offensive line, for the most part, you know, as long as everybody's working together and doing, the, you know, the the um, uh, working together, um, you know, you're going to be in a good situation. Jason, this Tampa defense has been pretty tough to run against the last yeah. several years. So, I mean, what, what makes them so effective uh, in stopping them? We have a great defensive coordinator in Todd Bowles and, a, and a great defensive players. I mean, I think that, um, you know, Todd, everywhere he's been, has been phenomenal as a defensive coordinator, head coach. Um, and then if you look at the players that they have up front, I mean, their front seven is you know, about as good as you're going to see. Um, big, strong, explosive linebackers that can run. I know that. Levante David looks like he's out, but you know, they got some some really good players and a great scheme and a great coach, and that usually adds up to a pretty good defense. You've had a number of uh, illegal man downfield penalties this year, and it's mm -hmm. probably an emphasis of the league to look at that a little more closely. And yeah. usually those penalties aren't the fault of the offensive line; it's usually other factors. How do you clean that up? Though? Yeah, I mean, we're definitely putting an emphasis on it. Um, you know, I think that um, you're, when you're doing a lot of these RPOs and things, you're trying to always, you know, you, you don't want to take away from the run game part of it because you want to be if the ball's given and handed off. You want to have a good run play. And uh, at the same time, uh, you can't uh, be so aggressive downfield because obviously the, the league is putting an emphasis on making these calls. So, um, you know, you have to know what the play is. You have to know what the call is. And um, if it is a a play that there could be a throw that's a little bit later, you just got to be a little bit slower getting up to the linebacker, which isn't ideal. But, um, you know, the RPOs have been really successful for us. So, you know, we certainly don't want to stop calling them. Now we just got to be a little bit smarter and adjust with how the game's being called. Jason, can I ask you a follow about Dillard? 
you know, you've been around some young players who have talent but never kind of have that evolutionist player that, that we've seen from him. Yeah. Uh, what qualities do you think kind of go into a player making that progress and, and you know, some do, some don't? What, what determines that? <laughs> that is a great question. Um, I, I wish that I knew 100% why that was. Um, you know, I've played with a lot of guys that never realized their potential. Not a lot, but I've played with guys that haven't, and I've certainly played with guys that um, have. And um, you know, I think the probably the the biggest thing that uh, most of the guys that realize the potential or continue to get better is they have a very realistic assessment of who they are as a player and and where they are. They're not their confidence isn't so bad that they don't think that they can do it and it's not so great that they're you know not aware of how bad they're playing so i think i think awareness is really where it's at and you have to really truly know as a player you know was that good or was that bad was that a what i was supposed to do on this play was i not uh while you're out there and while you're watching the tape and i think that most of the players that continue to get better are able to have that very realistic assessment while watching the film of, okay, that's not correct. Okay, that's correct. Okay, that's not correct. And you put your ego aside, and you're also not destroying yourself for every little thing that you have no confidence whatsoever. you got to kind of be in the middle of both of those. Jason, how much are you thinking about Lane? And have you met with him? And do you think that he'll be able to get back out here sometime? Yeah. You know, I've talked to Lane. I've met with him. And, you know, I just wish – the best form, you know, we everybody in here loves that guy. I mean, he's he's such a great personality, a great person to be around, a guy that really makes our room a lot more fun, a lot more energetic. He's obviously a great football player, and um, you know, I I just wish nothing but the best, and um, you know, can't say enough good things about Lane Johnson. When did you meet with him? Uh, he came up to the facilities last week before the game. Can't remember what day it was. So yeah, Thursday maybe. Have you seen him since? Uh, no. Do you think he's going to be back at some point? Um, I don't know. I don't want to comment on that. I kind of feel like injuries, personal matters, stuff like that. You know, that's out of my realm for making that assessment. Is it difficult for you to sort of compartmentalize? This is what I need to do for football, and then this is what I need to do to sort of help my friend and. Preparation. No, um, no. I think that you you always try and start off with the person first, football second. I mean, I think that you know we're doing a great job of preparing for the game, regardless. And um, you can do both of those. I don't think you need to do one or the other. Um, you've seen big nose tackles before. What is different about Peter Vaile besides his, his yeah. size? Well, he's fast too. You know, I think that you know usually you know most guys in the NFL have you know. You know, either they're really big and slow or really, you know, small and fast. Um, you know, the guys that are usually really good players are both of those. And, um, you know, I think that he's uh, he's not only a monstrous human being, but he's very explosive. He's uh, he's quick. You, know, you can tell he's smart. He understands uh, angles and, you know, what he's doing out there. He's a good athlete. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's what makes him a good football player. In the run, in the run game, it seems like a lot of the runs have been – it's either the RPOs or the zone reads, and then we haven't seen a lot of them power or out. And then yeah. when you guys went four minute, you had some success, even yeah. though they knew it was coming. So why haven't we seen more of that in over the course of the, of the game? Well, you know, sometimes you, I don't want to compare four minute to the regular part of the game because you know we're also getting into formations and things that are 100% run to. And I don't know that that's what you want to be in the regular part of the game. You want to be unpredictable, and you know you don't want to come out there in an unbalanced tackle with all these tight ends up on the line. They know you're not throwing the ball necessarily. Um, so, you know, we had a really, really good four-minute. Um, and I think for the most part when we've run the ball, we've run it pretty well this year. But um, a lot of the success we've had in the ground game and a lot of the su- success we've had on first and second down have been these RPOs. And, you know, a big part of that is obviously we've thrown quite a bit of those and teams haven't defended them well. Um, this past week, they did a little bit better of a job on on that stuff, but you know we still had some some hay on the on the tape. So, you know I think you know 
as an offense, you just want to try and you know be as productive as possible and score as many points as possible, and um, and move the ball. And you know, for the majority of the season, we've done a pretty good job of that uh, outside of Carolina, and um, we did do a good job of that in the second half. So I think um, you know we're doing a lot of really really good things, and if uh, we can just keep progressing and keep moving forward and keep going, I think uh, we'll just keep getting better. Last one, guys. Jason, I can't imagine it gets any easier as you get older to recover during these short weeks. But what does it what does it a week look like for you? How do you how do you recover? On the short weeks or just in general? Short weeks like this, four days. Well, games. you know, you don't practice at all. It ends up being walkthroughs, and the intensity on the field is way scaled down. So you get more time to recover from the game. Um, you're not going to get beat up again uh, going out and practicing. So that helps you a little bit. And then for you know. For me, I try and get in the pools. I try and you know do every, you know soft tissue massages, stuff like that, to try and speed it up. Um, but I've I've said this before. I love the short weeks. I'm a fan. I know a lot of people don't like them. Um, I think it's great. It's a week that you kind of get to really scale back physically. You have one big day of the game, which is going to be another physical game, especially against these guys. But um, you know we don't really have any practices after the game. You're off for like two or three days. So this is kind of a you know, this is a, you know, another chance for us to kind of reload here. I mean, our bye week doesn't come until week, uh, what, 14 or whatever. So I think this is a good time for us to, you know, work really, really hard for these next couple of days, play a big game against Tampa on Thursday, and then we'll get a little bit of rest, uh, you know, for the uh, middle third of the season.